why foreigners cheat on their Asian girlfriends. First, we're going to talk about some of the catalysts that lead to infidelity, and then we're going to talk about how foreigners cheat on their Asian girlfriends. All right, let's get started talking about the pillars of any and every successful relationship. And if you don't have these pillars in place, chances are your relationship will suffer one way or another. There's really no way around that. So the first pillar that is absolutely crucial to not only create but also have a lasting relationship is of course being best friends forever. It is so important the friendship part of the relationship is so important. If you don't have the friendship part, chances are the relationship will collapse sooner than later. If you don't have that, if you don't have commonalities, and that's so important, right? Because friends, what do you do with a friend? Hey, you go hang out. You know, if you're into billiards, you ask your friend, hey, do you want to go out and play billiards? If you're into tennis, you're going to ask him or her, hey, do you want to play tennis with me on Saturdays? That is great, right? So you have a commonality. And this is just one aspect of it, right? But the best friends forever part is not just about commonalities. It's also about emotional stability, emotional security. It's about you knowing that whenever things go south in one or more areas of your life, that you can actually go to this person and get emotional comfort, that you can find emotional comfort with this person. If that is the case, great. You have very likely a best friends forever situation, whereas if, you know, when you feel down and you would approach the person you're with and she or he is like, hey, oh, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. You know, if you approach somebody with a problem and you're looking, you're seeking emotional comfort and the person is like, hey, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Oh, you did this wrong. You did that wrong. I mean, it's okay to point out the mistakes that you made, but you want to find emotional comfort because any friendship is based on emotional comfort. So the emphasis is on affection and creating a strong emotional bond. Second, you can be yourself, right? If you're with a friend, with a very close personal friend of yours, you can be yourself. Your friend is not going to criticize you for who you are. He's, he or she is not going to criticize you for what you do, for what you did. No, that's not what friendship is all about. Friendship is all about acceptance. You don't need somebody who can complete you. You need somebody who can accept you for who you are. The acceptance factor in a friendship and in a relationship is so important. If you don't have that with your Asian girlfriend, then you don't really have much to base a relationship on. You are more alike than different. <laughs> Isn't that important too? Like if you are not alike, you are not doing well together, right? Because at the end of the day, if you're different, if everything about you both is different, and of course, it doesn't matter that, you know, we're not talking about ethnicity. We're not talking about certain other parts of life. No, we're, we're not talking about the external part. We're talking about the internal part here. Because, you know, just because you're dating somebody from a different culture, or from a different country does not mean that you have nothing in common with that person. No, that's not what it means. But what it means to be alike, you know, what I'm talking about here is a similar personality. You know, that you find the same things amusing or that, you know, you can make fun of each other. You know, you can love, you can have a love together. You know, these things make a big difference. And that is what I mean by being more alike. For instance, if you're the kind of person who gets upset very easily and the person you're with, you know, she's trying to make fun with you and you just don't get it because your personalities are not alike, you know, you don't match, then maybe that's not what, how it should be, you know? And being alike also has to do with interests, of course, we already talked about it, right? So if you have common interests, if you have commonalities, then you're just much more likely to get along for the long term. You know, you want to be alike, you want to have the same interests, you both like pets, or you both don't like pets, that's fine as well. You both like hiking, you both like sports, you both like having a family one day, then you have a lot of things in common, you are alike. What's more important than anything is, of course, communication. If you don't have good communication, you don't really have much to base a relationship on. Because at the end of the day, whether you solve a problem or not, mainly depends on whether you have good communication in a relationship or not. If communication is poor, if communication gets you nowhere, then you are looking at a relationship that will ultimately fail. There's not much you can do about it, 
but what you can do about it is to have good communication. Bring good communication into the relationship. Stress with your partner. Tell her, you know, if you're a foreign guy living in Asia, tell your partner, hey, communication is so important because if we can't solve the simplest thing, then how can we overcome big obstacles in the future? It is everything. That's what a relationship is all about, communication. And you gotta have that, you gotta make it clear. When we run into problems, we're not gonna wipe it under the table. We're actually going to put the problem that we have on the table and communicate. We're gonna talk about it. We are gonna resolve the problem. If we have any differences, no problem. We're gonna talk about it. And the most important thing is, again, level of acceptance. You know, if there's a great level of acceptance, if there's a great level of communication, then chances are you will be in a prosperous relationship. Respect is very, very important. Do you respect your Asian girlfriend or not? If you don't respect her, then chances are, sooner rather than later, you will end up doing something really bad to her. Because if you don't respect the person you're with, and when I say respect, I talk about the things that you do together or the things that you do individually. If you cannot be honest and open about the things you do individually, because you're doing something that you shouldn't be doing, or because you're doing something that could potentially insult her, if one of those things is the case, then chances are the relationship will not last. But if you have respect, if you tell her, look, this is important to me, I'm not talking about sexual stuff here, I'm talking about things that you want to do, your interests that are not going to hurt her feelings in terms of betrayal, you know, emotional betrayal, in terms of sexual betrayal. I'm not talking about that, I'm talking about things, everyday things that you want to do, that you might not be able to do because there is no respect. Maybe she does not respect private life and she doesn't want you to do certain things because maybe she's scared of loss, she's scared of losing you. All kinds of different things might be going through her head. But you have to be absolutely crystal clear about the individual life that you want to live and the communal life that you want to live. And you also have to be clear, to be fair, about her individual life. Because for a relationship to work, it's not just about spending every minute of the day together. No, that's not what it's about. It's about pretty much having three lives. You have your individual life, you have a mutual life, and she has her individual life, right? So you have your own life, she has her own life, and then you, li you live a third life together. If you have that, then chances are you have a great relationship because at the end of the day, one person can only give us so much and we always want to do things on our own. We want to spend time on our own. We need time to work. We need time with our friends. We might want to do some things on our own sometimes and that's perfectly fine, but you need to respect her on this and she also needs to respect you on this. Boundaries are very important, you know, that's what I was talking about, respect. A boundary is something that, okay, you cannot cross the line. So we're talking about physical abuse, we're talking about cheating, like two things you can do in a relationship. You cannot cross that line. If you cross that line, the relationship is broken. It's like a broken glass. As soon as you drop the glass, it's broken, right? So you can never repair it. So the moment you drop the glass, the glass is broken, the glass it's gonna have cracks, even if you repair it, it won't be the same. And something that's really important, <laughs> I almost forgot to talk about it, it's more important than anything, is of course the vision. Do you have a vision together? Because the vision is the difference between a successful relationship, a happy relationship, and a relationship that's on decline. A relationship that will not last. If the vision is good, if the vision is mutual, if you both have the same goals, then chances are the relationship will last for a long time. Usually people die because the vision dies. Usually relationships die because the vision dies or the vision is non-existent, right? If you don't have a vision that you both agree on, that if you have a vision that doesn't drive you to do more, to improve the relationship, to grow, because life is all about growth. Life is all about growth. A relationship is all about growth. A business is all about growth. If a business is not growing, a business is going downhill, a business is declining. If a relationship is not growing, a relationship is dying. If a friendship is not growing, a friendship is dying. It's the same with anything in life. There's either growth or there's decline. So you decide what it's going to be. And look, there are phases in life when a relationship declines. There are phases in life when a business declines, when a business loses money, when a business goes south. 
also for a friendship, right? There are phases in life when a friendship, you know, goes down. You don't have as much contact anymore. Maybe you neglected your friend. Maybe he neglected you. Who knows? As a rule of thumb, uh, you want to put as much effort as possible on growth and maintaining good communication because good communication, respect, commonalities, that's just the key to having any success in any area of life. Should you have failed at one or more of the points that we just discussed, the following thing very typically happens. And now I could argue, well, what if I'm a sex addict and I just love to go out there and get myself a girl? If that's you, then that's you, you know, then maybe nothing that I talked about over the past minutes will ever make sense to you. If you are naturally, if you are a natural predator, if you are naturally addicted to sex, then maybe nothing that I pointed out over the past minutes will make any difference in your life. I don't know that that's possible, but what men typically do, and it's because one or more of the things that we just talked about didn't work out. They don't work out. They can't fix those things. They don't know how to, you know, for many reasons, maybe there are certain differences, you know, there's communication problems, you know, there's transparency problems. There's no respect, whatever it may be. Whenever that happens, one or multiple things don't work out, men usually grab the following resources. Sex massages, girly bars, karaoke sessions. We're talking about all kinds of different sexual entertainment options that are available in Southeast Asia. And by the way, those options also exist in Latin America and Africa. So I'm not saying that this is just for Southeast Asia. Those options exist everywhere. And what happens is that they go out to do it because they could not fix the relationship and they get tired. You know, maybe their friend asked them, Hey, you want to go out? Maybe the friend is single. He asked him, Hey, you want to go out? You want to do this? And he's like, well, things are not working out well at home. I can't make it work. Yeah, sure. Let's go out. Let's go for a massage. Let's go out for karaoke. Let's go out, play billiards at a girly bar. Let's go out, do whatever, you know, they want to get laid. It's not because they need the sex because they can get the sex from their girlfriend, but they don't want to put in the work to solve the situation. Like I already pointed out, there is of course an exception, you know, of people who only care about sex and they shouldn't be in a long-term relationship ever because, you know, there, there are boundaries, you know, there are certain things that you need to prioritize in order to have a working relationship. And I feel bad for Asian women because they have to suck it up so much. They have to suck it up so much. They have to take so much BS from their boyfriends, from their husbands, because the husband is not transparent about it. You think the husband or the boyfriend is going to tell his girlfriend or his wife, Hey, I'm going out for a sex massage. Hey, I'm going out for a karaoke. Hey, I'm going out to a girly bar. Of course, he's not talking about that. He's not going to tell her that because it would be the kiss of death. He's not going to do that. No way. It's not going to do that, right? So it's going to hide it. And she lives with it because she kind of knows it subconsciously. You know, she subconsciously knows there's something wrong. You know, his behavior changed or whatever it may be. Maybe he's having less sex with her. You know, the private life changes. Whatever the case is, she knows it, but she's an introvert. You know, her culture doesn't really allow her to speak up. And very possibly he's also abusing her emotionally, physically, whatever it may be, right? It's very sad and it's happening right now. It's happening to so many women in Asia, to probably tens or hundreds of thousands of women. I don't want to say millions, but it happen it's happening to a lot of women in Asia and it's crazy, but it's happening because men fail at certain things. And look, don't get me wrong. Sex is easily available throughout Asia. It's so easy. You know, it's so easy. It doesn't matter how old you are. You can be a 60 year old guy. <laughs> or you can be 25 year old guy, you can find it anywhere at any time. So it's very easy. And that's part of the problem. It was much more difficult to get. If there was no such thing as prostitution, men would think twice because first of all, it wouldn't be so easy or, you know, they would need to start another relationship with another woman. And that's, you know, in certain countries, very difficult, takes a lot of time, takes a lot of money. So they're less likely to do it. But in Asia, it's pretty easy to do it all the time. Why do foreigners cheat on their Asian girlfriends or wives? What is your opinion on this subject? Leave a comment below and let us know. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. I'm uploading new videos on digital nomad locations, travel updates and investment advice several times a week right now. And if you got some more time left, check out these videos.